Okay guys, I'm going to talk to you about how to keep time and how to keep track of things. Two different ideas, but they're two basic ideas that you need in App Inventor. The first one, keeping track of time, we're going to go to the blocks view in just one second. I want to point out what we have here on our screen. We have a button, we have a label that you can't see because there's no text for it, and a clock that's set to its uh, default time interval, and I have enabled unchecked. So we're going to use this clock in order to make a countdown timer that will change some basic thing when we press the button. So this would be useful if you wanted to make something happen periodically, say every so many seconds, or you wanted a pause for some reason. There is no like pause feature in App Inventor that's obvious. We have to code it. So let's go to blocks and um, what we're going to do is in button one, when we click the button, we're going to start our, our countdown feature that's going to make it not do anything for, say, five seconds. And that's going to happen when we press the button. And it seems like your code would be in button one, um, that all the important code, but it's really not. All we're going to do in button one is turn on the clock. So we're going to set clock one timer to be enabled and we're going to use logic true. So next when the clock is on we're going to keep track of the time with a variable. So the very next thing we'll need to do is create a global variable and I'm just going to call it time and I'll set that to be zero. And every time this clock ticks, which at its present setting is once every second, I'm going to add one to the time that I'm keeping track of. So this variable time first was created, and this has to stay. I see people create this, set it up here, and then delete this because they don't know what it does. This global variable gives the value time a start number, zero, every time you start the program. It has to always be there anytime we're going to use it later in the program. Okay, so every time this clock ticks, we're going to go to math, and we're going to set the value that it was, get value, so whatever it used to be, to what it is plus one. So starts out at zero, it's going to be zero plus one. So second one, it will be one. Second two, it'll be one plus one, and so on. And then when it gets to the number five in this case, because we're going to make this count for five seconds, we'll do something. Okay, so if the time is, I'm going to choose greater than or equal to, because sometimes in the code it goes beyond, uh, it, it, it overshoots and it, and it misses this check. And so if it hits six, if we only tested to see if it was five and it hit six for some reason and never got checked, then we could never have this event happen. And we want to make sure it happens. So I'm going to do greater than or equal to five which will mean five seconds in, the next event will happen. So um, what I'll do is I'll just set the label text to be, I don't know, let's say uh, time's up. Okay, and then at that time when the time is up, it's probably a good idea to stop this clock because why well, have it keep ticking away? So I'm going to set this to be false. Um, and so let's give it a shot. So let's see what happens. So here we have the uh, emulator, and I'll click it, and it'll say one, two, three, four, five. Time's up. All right, great. So now we can keep track of things like that. If we wanted something to happen, um, so on a revolving basis, say again and again and again, and not just uh, once, then we can give it different code. So we could, for example, set this global variable back to zero, and maybe every time the clock ticks, we'll we'll change the color of button one to. Well, now I need to make it some random color, I guess. So 
So all the possible colors that this can make are from 0 to 255. So now, if I click this, it should change this color every five seconds to a random color. So there we have it. Okay, so another thing we could do is we could create, say, a countdown timer. So we could use all this in a similar way and make a countdown from some number, whatever we want. Um, let's make it 60 seconds. And every time the clock ticks, we're going to now subtract time because I'm going to make a countdown, not up. And it's important to get your order of operations here. Let's subtract one from the number, not the number from one. And when the number equals or is less than zero, we'll turn the clock off. We could, well here, you know, we won't turn the clock off. We'll change the label text to... Say time's up. And also, let's change this label text to, in the meantime, while we're counting down, to, to be whatever this uh, time is, so we can see it. So now, every time it clicks, it'll show us the time, and when it gets to zero, it'll say time's up. So, it already happened during the time where I was making it. Let's start that over again. This is awkward. Put the code in there. Little time back to zero. I'll have to turn the clock off. And here's another thing that's probably useful is we can put this code actually over here. So when we click the button, it changes the global time back to the start value. So let's try that again. Okay, so we're clicking down. I'm not going to wait a full minute and make you watch it. Variables are also useful for keeping track of things. For example, if I wanted to know, have I pressed uh, this button before? I want to be able to keep track of that. Maybe I want to say, change the text for the button to say clicked or unclicked. For example, if I go to this button and I say, I'll make it say unclicked because if I can. I'll make it say unclicked when it has not been clicked, and I'll make its color be uh, blue, the text color. Okay, so now when somebody clicks it, I want to be able to know if, uh, if it's been clicked or not and kind of have it alternate back and forth. So I'm going to get rid of this code, and I'm going to change my variable name to be clicked. And of course, this variable name really has no meaning in the world except that it you know is instructional to me it helps me keep track of what's happening so I'm going to set click to be false so in other words this is just going to start out with the value false like it has not been clicked okay and so now uh, when somebody clicks button one I'm going to do a test I'm going to say has the button been clicked if button one I'm um, sorry if this variable get variable clicked um, equals and equals false then I know that it has not been clicked yet so now I'll change that variable so I'll set that variable to be true and I'll do whatever code I want so in this case I'm going to set button one uh, text color to to be um, we'll make it red and I'll also change button one text to say clicked oh, no. right have to change that
I have an else in here as well. So if the opposite's true, if it is, it has been clicked, like after it was clicked, then um, I'm just going to duplicate all these things because they're mostly going to be the same. So in other words, this was true. Uh, oh, shoot. This was false. I'm going to set it to true. Now, if it was true, I'm going to set it to false. I'll set the color to be blue. And I'll set the text to be unclicked. All right, so let's see how that works. So let's uh, go over to the emulator again, and I'll say clicked, unclicked, clicked, unclicked, and it goes back and forth. So I can keep track of it that way. Really, really handy. Another nice thing about that is you can, you know, use that so that buttons can have more than one meaning. Uh, you can change the, the text or whatever it happens to be depending on what its state is. So this is a really useful tool to be able to make things really, really nice. And it requires a variable. Okay, finally, the last thing that I want to have is, is a way for people to keep score or count of something. Keeping count is something people really struggle with. So finally, I'll name this count, and I'll set it back to zero. And all I'm going to do is every time somebody clicks, the button. I'm going to set the button to uh, the count. Uh, so I, I got ahead of myself here. Um, I'm going to set this variable count to be whatever it was. And I obviously I can use whatever numbers I want. I don't have to add one to it. I could, could add five to it or a hundred to it. But I'm going to add one to it. And then I'm going to set label one text to a join and some text and I'll say count equals with a space after it so it's nice and neat and then this. So I didn't give it any way to zero that out or whatever but now every time I click counts up and you see it's nice and neat. Um, every time I click it, it goes up that space that I added after the count, you know, makes a nice touch. It looks a lot better. This is exactly the way you'd make a score as well. As far as resetting this, I mean, you know, to reset things means to put them back where they were at the beginning, right? So, um, you know, I need some method to reset it, maybe a button. Um, so if I have a button, I could duplicate this and I don't need to do any math operations to reset it, right? Resetting just means putting it back to zero in this case. Resetting in, in another program may mean something else, but it's the same basic idea, right? And then here, this is also very important because see, if I don't include this line, I only include this line, then when I reset it, nothing happens. So I, my counter counts, but my reset button, believe it or not, does count. See, I, I clicked reset, counts at six, and if I hit it again, now it's back to one. So reset's working, but what I'm not doing is putting it on the screen again. So now, resets it back to zero. And the count makes sense. So there's a very simple idea there with that. Um, this could be for resetting score, could be resetting count for something, almost anything. Okay, so that's just a couple of ways that you can use variables to keep track of things, keep count of things, keep count of time, keep count of when buttons were pressed keep score, things like that, and also, you know, how to put the variable back to the way it was and you know, change things back to their start values. Remember, don't delete the global variable once it's been initialized. This is part of the code and it has to be there because otherwise the program doesn't know what this variable is at the start of the program. Even if it's defined later in the program, it has to always exist here. If I delete this, you will get errors and I have to recreate it. If you accidentally delete it, it's really not that hard. I can just give it the same name again and it'll fix it. Okay. And by the way, it'll doesn't it gives you a warning, but it doesn't give you an error by leaving this blank because it just defaults to zero. So my program will still run just fine with that as a as a blank. I always put a value there because 
bothers me. But anyway, good luck. Have a great day.